is one of the most enduring and useful kinds of ideas in mathematics, right? It just pops up everywhere. And also it's very accessible, right? Like in fact, the first time that you learn about like something as simple as multiplication, right? It's when you first go from adding and you learn your times tables, like times is a thing that you can do, okay? We learn it in terms of area. So for example, <coughs> there we go. Um, establishing the fact that three times five is the same as five times three is very easy established through area, right? Because you take a shape which is three by five, and then all you need to do is turn it on its side and you have five times three. But it's the same shape, right? So error is something we begin with very, very early on. And yet, if you've got this graph, this little parabola drawn up, despite its simplicity, it sort of disguises hide these very, very deep questions. Example, okay? We know how to find the area of um, rectangles. What other kinds of shapes do we know how to find the area of? Example, triangle. a triangle. Trapezius. Okay, we can do trapezia, right? What else? Circles. Circles. Um, in fact, you can work out the area of any polygon, if you like, as long as it's got straight edges, and you can work out circles. Are you happy with this idea? And we spend a long time trying to work these out. We even develop, you know, really fancy, sophisticated ways of working out some of these different areas, okay? And yet, if you come to, like, almost one of the most simple curves that we know how to draw, right? In fact, um, by the definition, by, like, the general way that people say curves, like, this is the simplest curve that you can draw, okay? Like, you can draw y equals x, but it's not curvy, okay? Now, to try and work out the area underneath this curve, Okay, for example, let's put, in some, uh, let's put in some lines in here. If I put in a boundary like that and say, okay, look, here's a shape under here. What's its area? Okay, how big is that thing? If you know where you start and where you end, suppose that's something, I don't know, call it two or something like that. How big is the shaded area? It's an immensely simple shape. Immensely simple. However, it defies all of this understanding we already have developed on area. There's no polygon that you can fit in there because of the, the nature of this shape in here that's going to be exactly equal to this area. There's not even like any combination of circles or semicircles or sectors that you can try and like fit the curves in so that it's like nice and exact. You can't get there. Such a simple question, okay? So Riemann was this mathematician. Riemann? German guy, double M, worth writing his name, who saw this, this is an interesting problem, okay? We want to try and tackle this problem. So he said, look, okay, classic mathematical technique. If you can't work out a problem as it is stated, what you do is you try and simplify the problem and see if you can work out, well, can I work out an answer to a simpler version of this? And maybe I can kind of like import that understanding forward, okay? So for instance, um, you've got all these shapes over here that we know how to work out the area in. Rim was really smart. He said, well, you know what? I can try and approximate this area with like versions of those. So here was the first way he did it. Draw some vertical lines in for me so that we can divide this interval. Well, let's divide it maybe into four, for example. So if you halve, okay, and then if you halve these two, okay, Riemann said, well, each of those, those four pieces that I've got, one, two, three, four, I still don't know what each of those is because they still have that curvy bit in them, okay? But I can approximate them with shapes that I know how to work out, okay? So the first way he did this, and we're going to, um, we're going to copy this over as well, he said, look, I'm going to draw some rectangles in here. I'm going to draw some rectangles. For instance, I can draw a rectangle here, here, and here, okay? Now, if I shade these in, like so, there is actually, even though I've only drawn three rectangles in, there's actually a fourth one, right? Fourth one here. It just doesn't have any height because I'm, I'm on the ground there. Okay. These four rectangles, the area that I'm after, the green area, the curvy area, it clearly is going to be greater than this area. Do you agree with that? It's, it's just above. It's always above, right? So it's like I'm missing these little gaps, okay? So that'll get close. But I can be even smarter and I can say, See these same subdivisions that gave us four? I've got rectangles underneath the curve. I can also put some rectangles in above the curve, like this. Mm 
Okay. Now, these um, I'm not going to color them in because it will make my diagram too busy. <coughs> if you've got enough colors, you probably can. But the areas of those four red dotted rectangles, okay? Can you see they're always above the curve? Always above, always above, always above. So the actual area I want, right? Let me write it like this. Area under curve, okay? It's going to be less than the red dotted area, okay? And it's going to be more than well, I've called it the, um, the blue shaded area, those blue rectangles. Okay. So Riemann said, hey, this is really good because even though I don't have it exact, I can pin down this area within some actual numbers because, well, they're rectangles. I can deal with rectangles. Okay. Now, here is a crucial step where we're going to differ now from where, say, an engineer um, or even to some extent a scientist would stop. If I can know that the area is between these two values, right? Draw a new parabola over here next to this, right? Draw a new parabola, the same one, y equals x squared. If I know it's between these two values, all I need to do is to get these, oops, that should have said area, is to get these two areas, the blue one and the red one, to get them really, really close together, okay? to get the blue rectangles underneath and the rectangles, the red rectangles above, to get those values very, very close, okay? Our Riemann said, okay, I know exactly how to do this, right? Instead of dividing this area, for instance, into four slices, what if we divided it into more, right? Like say we divide it up um, into four, let's divide it up, um, let's double it. So there's my four. And now if I halve every one of those little intervals there, one, two, three, four, okay. Now when I draw my rectangles, okay, and in fact, it's actually important that we draw the rectangles. You've got the first one there, the second one there, and so on. What I want you to pay very close attention to is, have a look at those gaps the difference between the actual area that I want, the curved area, and all of these rectangles that I'm now adding into this diagram. Do you see that these gaps have gotten smaller? Do you notice that? Okay. These gaps here are pretty huge. You can see them very obviously. I have more gaps, but they're all smaller. They're all little, little triangles. And in exactly the same way, when I put in the red rectangles that go over the top of these guys, like so, The blue area underestimates the area under the curve, and the red area overestimates the area under the curve. But the overestimation and the underestimation are now smaller, right? So these two numbers are going to get closer to each other. Now an engineer would say, look, I just need this to be close enough, close enough. Like people say, oh yeah, you know, I know 50 million, billion, whatever, decimals of pi, pi, right? Engineers will only ever use about six. Mm. About six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. At that point there, that's insane accuracy. Enough to do any like building or bridge you're dealing with. That's just fine if you want to make a circle. or have to have any circles in your design. All uh, an engineer would need to say is, okay, as so long as I can get close enough, as so long as I can get these numbers close <coughs> enough together, I'm happy, right? I've got something that's accurate enough for me to work with, okay? But in this classroom, we are not engineers or scientists. We are mathematicians, right? And mathematicians are never satisfied with close enough. We say, can we get this exactly? Okay, so in order to do that, we need a bit of language to describe <coughs> what's going on. 